G'day there. Uh, in this video I would like to show you my high voltage dual thief, which is a flyback transformer and a 3055 transistor. And to make a J101 replication, I got the idea from his version of the same thing. Uh, I've got a really big heat sink with a PC fan on there to help keep the transistor cool. It does like to get hot. I am noticing reduced performance as I use it. I'm on my second transistor, but this first transistor actually tests the case. I'm not sure that it's the transistor. Um, there might be some diodes or something inside the flyback, or possibly the coils are shorting out. Um, I think it's the flyback that's reducing my performance. But it goes quite well. I have um, 10 turns in total of wire with a centre tap at 5 turns for my power input. One side goes to my base through my 1K resistor, the other side goes to my collector. Um, I've also soldered on this blue wire down here where the return seems to be. That was the one that the um, high voltage here, the chicken stick, wanted to arc to the most. But I am having issues there. When I first started using it in the arcs along, I was getting arcs from the second pin next to it there, and they were originating from these two pins over here, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I can't get any of these ones to work as a return, they seem to connect to these three pins but there's some high powered diodes or something in there, it um, doesn't come up on the ohms meter or on the diode test meter but um, if I put my signal generator through it I can see which ones are connected. Um, so I'll be testing out some different capacitors that I made, like these variable cup capacitors and it turns out my um, little welding rod adjusters, adjuster points there wasn't such a great idea for higher voltages, that's the only let down with those. So I whipped up a um, just a single, mostly all the way around foil, not very adjustable pair. So I can demonstrate that these do actually work quite well with high voltage. Um, I was going to show you a light globe, but which I was just going to sit on there and sit the wire over the top earthed out and you would have seen plasma in it. I was playing around with my Leyden's jars here and I accidentally shorted one out through myself and my hand flicked out and knocked the light globe off and smashed it and that's the last filament light globe I have so we won't be doing that. Um, I have tested out all these capacitors, all your common high voltage ones that you'll salvage from stuff. Oops, there goes the red metal film one. So there's ceramics and metal films and I think that's mostly there. Also, I did a microwave capacitor. They all just come up as a closed circuit. They don't have any capacitive action whatsoever on the voltage this thing puts out. Um, so, that's enough talking. I've got a couple of things here I'd like to show you. Some Franklin bells up there. We'll be doing some discharges through the different capacitors. Um, also, the CD will be destroying, so let's get into it. Close this door now so you can get a bit of darkness. Actually, I'll, just, I'll just turn that off for a sec. Let's hook up some cables. First one I want to do is I'm going to show you my arc length and that this actually runs a Swiss coil quite nicely. Move this fluoro over here because it's going to light that too, hopefully. going to stay there. That'll work. And where's my measure gone? There's my measure. I actually have the only non-metallic ruler I could find. Just the little markings across the bottom of the cigarette packet there. Um, that is in centimetres. One through to seven. Okay, so I'm going to move my wire pretty much right on the one centimetre mark. And that is earthed out to the Swiss coil by fill a pancake. Okay, as I get close, I should be able to start pulling. I actually pull about 11 or 12 millimetres of plasma stream. I don't know if you can see that plasma there. Zoom in a bit. So, so plasma does start to form at 11 or 12. We don't get that nice big spark until about 10, 9. 9 10 centimetres, 9 10 millimetres, sorry. As you can see, it's a pretty decent spark. And it is lighting up pretty much every receiver. In my little sweat spark up there. Mm. 
Lots of, lots of them anyway. Alright, I'll try to flick it through that fluoro. Which will get brighter if I get it just closer. Behave yourself. Let's zoom you back out. Sorry about that. So there's that. Uh, we'll do Franklin bells before we hook up any capacitors. So I can actually stick down. And I'll just get my earth. And we'll see if we can earth up to this can here without tipping it down. Very good. Not too far apart, there we go. And if we get a bit closer. We start with some serious arc in between the uh, two cans and a little bit of metal, a wrinkle in between. And it just sticks there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I was going to show you plasma in a filament globe, like I said, but it broke it. Uh, these guys don't work real well, I don't want to pull this one apart. It does flicker, it, lo it mostly arcs across the bum there. Uh, but this other one, which is actually out of a um, battery powered camping torch, works quite well, just with the earth hooked up. The earth return. And if I arc to this end, lights up quite nicely indeed. If I stop the arcing, it goes out. I have to have an arc. Alright, so let's grab a CD. And I'll stick it in these cups. And I'll grab my earth. We need some more amps to blow that CD to pieces. So let's have a look at some of these caps for a minute. I'll leave that one there. I'll grab the second green one down here for the caps. And I'll show you what these guys do first. They're pretty cool. I've had to make up a makeshift table well away from my computer because the um, MFs were a bit much and out. So there you go, it's non-lethal, it just got me a beauty. I had my finger on the earth and my wrist bumped my chicken stick, which is dangling just here. And that does hurt. But obviously not enough milliamps to kill. Or you'd be watching a bzzz dunk. Um we need another lead for the positive. Now I should point out I might even um, turn this off now. Let's be safe about this. And these up to this cap. As I said, these caps are a bit of a high voltage fail. Turning him back on now. I've been careful to grab the side that has no foil. Start marking out all over the rolling rods. Sounds a lot like a taser. So can't use that cap. So let's go for these little guys. I did measure this one. It's about uh, a 250 picto farads. These ones up here are about 500 in their maximum point, which is where they're set to. So there we go. We now have the capacitor in parallel across the circuit. And as you can see, no arcing on the capacitor. Let's see what we can do to our CD now. Well, that's a bit better. Alright, 
works, that works alright. But let's see what the big Leyden's jars do. I'll disconnect again so I don't zap myself again. I do get little tiny zaps off my battery and terminals and all the points on the transistor too. I'll just point out, so that further indicates to me that the flyback is playing up. Uh, now these Leyden's jars. This one was working really good until this morning. I've been doing this for a couple of days. Um, I seem to have gotten some salt build up around here. The foil was all covering the wire until just before I started filming this. But it started to buzz and hiss and there was plasma going on in there across the salt crystals. This one is doing the same thing since yesterday. This one plays up at leak somewhere. I can hear it buzzing. And it's not as powerful even though they both have... Um, what are they? Two, th two nanofarads, so those guys are. 2,000 pictofarads each. So I've had to pull the foil away from the top of that one. I probably should consider putting some... I'll just make sure these cup caps, by the way, do hold their charge for a bit. A little spark there. I picked one up quite some time after using it and earlier and zapped myself. Put a few wax off this, it's not pleasant. Um, negative on my foil. And I'll put my positive on here. And I'll stick the power on it. Let's see, you can see most of it there. Alright, I did hear a faint hiss from the Leyden's jar as it turned on. It sounded like an air pressure kind of hiss. So, I'll make sure that doesn't touch the jar. And, oh, forgot to move my earth. There we go, let's try that. The foil is now raining down. Time to move that earth again. See that bit that gets out. And that was the Leyden's jar discharging then when I got close. It does earth out through the um, gaffer tape occasionally. Probably wear eye protection when you're doing this. I did get some um, foil in my eye yesterday. That wasn't pleasant either. So quite a dangerous little device you've got here. Um, only for the advanced electronics person, I would suggest. Quite dangerous. Anyway, that's about all I've got here for you for today. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll do another update soon.